Chapter One of the Just So Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tim Bulkley of BigBible.org. Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling. Chapter One How the Whale Got His Throat. In the sea, once upon a time, O oh my best beloved, there was a whale, and he ate fishes. He ate the starfish, and the garfish, and the crab, and the dab, and the place, and the dace, and the skate, and his mate, and the mackerel, and the pickerel, and the really, truly, twirly, whirly eel. All the fishes he could find in all the sea he ate with his mouth. So, till at last there was only one small fish left in all the sea and he was a small stewed fish and he swam a little behind the whale's right ear so as to be out of harm's way then the whale stood up on his tail and said I'm hungry and the small stewed fish said in a small stewed voice noble and generous cetacean have you ever tasted man no said the whale what is it like nice said the small stewed fish nice but nubbly then fetch me some said the whale and he made the sea froth up with his tail one at a time is enough said the stewed fish if you swim to latitude fifty north longitude forty west that is magic you will find sitting on a raft in the middle of the sea with nothing on but a pair of blue canvas breeches and a pair of suspenders you must not forget the suspenders best beloved and a jackknife one shipwrecked mariner who it is only fair to tell you is a man of infinite resource and sagacity so the whale swam and swam to latitude fifty north longitude forty west as fast as he could swim and on a raft in the middle of the sea with nothing to wear except a pair of blue canvas breeches a pair of suspenders you must particularly remember the suspenders best beloved and a jackknife he found one single solitary shipwrecked mariner trailing his toes in the water he had his mummy's leave to paddle or else he would never have done it because he was a man of infinite resource and sagacity then the whale opened his mouth back and back and back till it nearly touched his tail and he swallowed the shipwrecked mariner and the raft he was sitting on and his blue canvas breeches and the suspenders which you must not forget and the jackknife he swallowed them all down into his warm dark inside cupboards then he smacked his lips so and turned round three times on his tail but as soon as the mariner who was a man of infinite resource and sagacity found himself truly inside the whale's warm dark inside cupboards he stumped and he jumped and he thumped and he bumped and he pranced and he danced and he banged and he clanged and he hit and he bit and he leaped and he creeped and he prowled and he howled and he hopped and he dropped and he cried and he sighed and he crawled and he bawled and he stepped and he leapt and he danced hornpipes where he shouldn't and the whale felt most unhappy indeed have you forgotten the suspenders so he said to the stewed fish this man is very nubbly and besides he is making me hiccup what shall i do tell him to come out said the stewed fish so the whale called down his own throat to the shipwrecked mariner come out and behave yourself i've got the hiccups nay nay said the mariner not so but far otherwise take me to my natal shore and the white cliffs of albion and I'll think about it and he began to dance more than ever you'd better take him home said the stute fish to the whale I ought to have warned you that he is a man of infinite resource and sagacity so the whale swam and swam and swam with both flippers and his tail as hard as he could for the hiccups and at last he saw the mariners natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion and he rushed halfway up the beach and opened his mouth wide and wide and wide and said change here for winchester ashulot nashua Keene, and stations on the fitchburg road 
and just as he said Fitch the mariner walked out of his mouth but while the whale had been swimming the mariner who was indeed a person of infinite resource and sagacity had taken his jackknife and cut up the raft into a little square grating all running criss-cross and he had tied it firm with his suspenders now you know why you were not to forget the suspenders and he dragged that grating good and tight into the whale's throat and there it stuck then he recited the following shloka which as you have not heard it I will now proceed to relate by means of a grating I have stopped your eating for the mariner was also an Hibernian and he stepped out on the shingle and went home to his mother who had given him leave to trail his toes in the water and he married and lived happily ever afterward so did the whale but from that day on the grating in his throat which he could neither cough up nor swallow down prevented him eating anything except very very small fish and that is the reason why whales nowadays never eat men or boys or little girls the small stewed fish went and hid himself in the mud under the door sills of the equator he was afraid that the whale might be angry with him the sailor took the jackknife home he was wearing the blue canvas breeches when he walked out on the shingle the suspenders were left behind you see to tie the grating with and that is the end of that tale when the cabin portholes are dark and green because of the seas outside when the ship goes whop with a wiggle between and the steward falls into the soup tureen and the trunks begin to slide when nursey lies on the floor in a heap and mummy tells you to let her sleep and you aren't waked or washed or dressed why then you will know if you haven't guessed you're fifty north and forty west descriptions of the pictures by the author one this is the picture of the whale swallowing the mariner with his infinite resource and sagacity and the raft and the jackknife and his suspenders which you must not forget the buttony things are the mariner's suspenders and you can see the knife close by them he is sitting on the raft but it's tilted up sideways so you don't see much of it the whitey thing by the mariner's left hand is a piece of wood that he was trying to row the raft with when the whale came along the piece of wood is called the jaws of a gaff the mariner left it outside when he went in the whale's name was Smiler and the mariner was called Mr. Henry Albert Bivins A.B. The little stewed fish is hiding under the whale's tummy, or else I would have drawn him. The reason that the sea looks so ooshy scooshy is because the whale is sucking it all into his mouth so as to suck in Mr. Henry Albert Bivins, and the raft, and the jackknife, and the suspenders. You must never forget the suspenders. 2. Here is the whale looking for the little stute fish, who's hiding under the dorsals of the equator. The little stute fish's name was Pingle. He is hiding among the roots of the big seaweed that grows in front of the doors of the equator. I've drawn the doors of the equator, they are shut. They are always kept shut because a door ought always to be kept shut. The ropey thing right across is the equator itself, and the things that look like rocks are the two giants Moa and Koa that keep the equator in order. They drew the shadow pictures on the doors of the equator, and they carved all those twisty fishes under the doors. The beaky fish are called beak dolphins, and the other fish with the queer heads are called hammer-headed sharks. The whale never found the little stute fish till he got over his temper, and then they became good friends again. End of chapter one. Recording by Tim Bulkley of BigBible.org.